camera shy. Don't be camera shy. I'm not gonna be camera right. shy. I see your eyelashes and sit back at me. You know what I'm saying? What? Right it's your girl Cam, and I'm on TWE with my boy Half and Half, and I actually did get to see him rock the stage out, which he did amazing. So tell us about your favorite part of the show. It's a lot of comedians. That's my favorite part of the show. It's like a, <laughs> it's like a Mexican smorgasbord of comedians. Come it's on. like it's, it's like thirty interview. of You're them. You're not gonna make me laugh in the interview. This is serious. No, I'm serious. It's like no. thirty comedians though. Who does that? It's like thirty comedians in there. I'm serious. Maybe five minutes. No. no, I had ten minutes, but it's just like thirty. Oh. Oh shit. I thought that was a window. I thought it was a window, so I got warned. Embarrassing. Do you windows. see this? I, I thought I thought I could see my car out there because repo man. Um, uh, but but it's it's just a door. I'm just gonna stay here and look cute and let him talk. She can't. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself as far as I'm half and half. When you I've started this, I've been doing this since like two thousand. Kinda embarrassed because I'm not at the pinnacle of my career, but with you know, but family, it's it's kind of yeah, family and kids, kind of hard works. to get on the road and everything, but you know, shows like this, you know, kind of, kind of helps build me up or whatever, you know, it's, it's coming, it's definitely coming, um, I am an author, okay. some people don't know that, under Triple Crown, yeah, thank you, Triple Crown Publications, Sick. you know, shout out to Vicki Stringer and let that be the reason for everybody who read books and know that, but she ripped me off, so I don't want to give her too many shout outs. But, you know, I'm a comedian, I'm an author. Got some don't get ripped off. Yeah, don't get ripped off. You know, not all the time. Read your paperwork. Yeah, read your paperwork. I don't even know if I'm getting paid tonight, though. See, because I, I still ain't learned my lesson about contracts. I got paid in beer. I got paid in beer. But I got paid in beer. Wow. No, no, no. But the point, me, me, me and the point. Is that a joke? No, no, no. Me and the point. <laughs> no, no, no. Me and the point. <laughs> shout, shout out to Kevin Lefka and Laugh Out. Left the comedy. But it's an opportunity for you. It's Something good for you to build yeah, to start. Yeah, no, 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 if you don't pay me tonight, he's definitely gonna book me on something else. We got the prison shows going on. And it, it's a, yes. yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a so stepping stone. It, it, it's, it, a, it's, a, it's a ladder. Yeah. Yeah. If he take a loss, I take a loss. That's my partner. We them Scram Boys, them Scram Boys. You know, yeah, shout out to Scram, Scram Boys. Boys. Also, shout out to Eastwick. I know y'all going through some problems in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Get y'all shit together. That's why I moved. But unfortunately, everybody can't move. Love you, Elizabeth. Keep it up. So. Tell us where you see yourself in the next five years as far as your career and goals and as being a comedian. Uh, see yourself as the next. I, I just want to work it. I just want to work it. Okay. You know, you know okay. Clap it up if you work. Yes. Yes. I'm not being politically correct tonight either. I'm not, I'm telling the truth. I work with mentally retarded motherfuckers. But I love them. They're not as dumb as you people think they are. And you have not been embarrassed until you've been embarrassed by a retarded motherfucker in the Kmart. Oh, I, I lost the keys to the van and Willie found out, oh, Willie lost his mind in the goddamn Kmart. <laughs> Every person Willie walked by said, miss, you seen the black king? His dumb ass lost it. How the fuck am I supposed to get to work tomorrow? <laughs> Shut up, Willie. Sir, you seen the kid with silver and black about that little, probably on the floor somewhere, his dumb ass lost it. Like, shut up, Willie. I don't like Willie. I'm gonna tell y'all a true story, but nobody better tell my wife or I know who told. I'm at the hotel with my mistress, right? And we doing our thing. So after we done, I clean my dick with the towel, rag, you know, I throw it on the floor, accidentally throw the wet towel on my goddamn drawers. Didn't know. Job called, said you gotta come in. Put, try to put my drawers on, I'm like, oh shit, they wet, can't put them on. So, I put my, I put my damn sweatpants on, no drawers, go to work, find out, I gotta take Willie back to Kmart. Right? You know what Willie does to me right in the middle of K K Kmart? Motherfucker pants me right in the middle of Kmart. What? They're hanging out all in Kmart. Willie yells, "Ew!" His ass is freeze balling. They call us mentally retarded, but his dumb ass out here freeze balling. He said, "Fuck you, Willie." I got another one I work with. Right, his name Tony, and Tony is fat as hell. He got diabetes. Loves McDonald's. Loves to order it every day. But on my job, we can't let him order McDonald's every day. So Willie is saying, I'm ordering McDonald's. I want two Big Macs, large fries, two pies, and a Coke. I'm like, Willie, you can't have that. You having chicken breast. I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm calling Amanda. 
She's going to get me out of here. Fuck you, head. Fuck you. Suck your mama dick. I'm like, really, if my mama had a dick, she'd be my father. He like, suck his dick too. <laughs> but Willie, right, he blind, right? He kind of like blind, but he functional. So I purposely put sneakers in front of him and watch him trip. So when his blind ass trip over the sneakers, I'm like, that's what your fat ass get. Cause Jesus don't like ugly. He like, suck his dick too. Oh, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you, Willie. Clap it up if you ain't here drinking tonight. You drinking? They told me them drinks was like $5. I said, fuck you, I'm bringing my own shit in here. Bump y'all. Y'all not gonna get me. Thank you, right back there, my brothers and sisters in the back. And y'all didn't have to sit back then either. We fought to sit up front, fuckers. You get what you pay for, though, I, I feel you. But now, I go to establishments with my wife, and she'll tell me, you know, she wants sex on the beach. I go in there and tell me the price of what the sex on the beach is, and I'm like, shit. Babe, you gotta have sex on a dirty mattress when we get home. Cause these prices is ridiculous. I don't, I don't, I don't like that. Fellas, you ever been so drunk you told your woman all the nasty stuff he was gonna do to her? And then messed around and passed out? She called your cousin over to do all the nasty shit you said you was gonna do? Man, I just wanna be comfortable with I just wanna be, I just wanna work as a comedian. Travel the world and pay my bills as a comedian. Nothing more than that. Less. It doesn't have to be Kevin Hart. Doesn't have to be movies, just just laws don't work yet. It, it, yeah, you feel good about it. It makes you happy. That's what it is, basically. Yeah. This Stuff is your like goal. It's your passion. Exactly. That's Stuff tonight. like tonight. Stuff so, like tonight is good. So half and half, can you tell us exactly where we can find you as far as social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, things like that? Facebook, here? my half and half fan page, you can check that out. And then it's Will Robbins on Facebook. Will Robbins on Facebook. Exactly. Instagram, you got Will, you got Lotto underscore red on Instagram. Twitter, Will underscore Robbins, you'll find me on there. Okay, repeat that one more time so they can view it to understand what you're saying. All right. Instagram, Lotto underscore red. And then you have Twitter, Will R. Robbins underscore red. And I think I messed that up because I, I am drunk. Okay. Y'all call me at the drunk stage, but y'all get the point. Y'all find me. Y'all yeah, find me if definitely. you want to. You got you it. Find me. But um, I want to thank you. Before I get out of here real quick, um, big women, clap it up for yourselves. Big women, clap it up for yourselves. I love you. I, I love big women. Because big women do special shit when they come to the bedroom. They like scented candles that smell like snickerdoodles when it's time to fuck. I love big women. I had this one big woman, I would come home and she would sing songs, and I loved her for it. I would come home and I would hear her singing songs like, one, look at those fries. And there I see a Big Mac with cheese. The milkshake we share tastes so sweet. Together we'll always eat. Here and now, I promise to eat fat free. I'm like, stop that! I would hear something like, it's seven o'clock on the dot. I got my pork chops ready to eat. I got my spoon and my knife just sitting there waiting for me. I pull up to the table. Can't wait to eat. Baby, tell me what you're gonna do with them green beans. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm half and half, and as always, I'll be black later. So I'm leaving right now. So about yourself? I'm, I'm doing fine. I want to tell you that the show you put up today was great. Amazing. First and foremost, you were amazing too. She's lying. I suck. I was horrible. He was I was it. the least funniest person in the whole room. See, he's a comedian. If you go, lie. <laughs> so no, Kefra, I want to ask you, so how long ago did you start the comedy and all of that? I've been doing comedy for about seven and a half years now. Okay, that's good. So as far as right now, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Next five years, I see myself homeless, broke, and uh, with a cup in my hand, hoping that people throw me a dollar. So what he really means is he feels he's so rich, famous, and on everything. <laughs> That's what he means when he says that. Always know it's the opposite. Next question. So um, as far as tonight, who's your favorite person on stage? 
favorite person on stage would have to be myself. Aside yourself. You can't say yourself. Why not? Because you're talking about another I'm arrogant. I'm, I'm narcissistic <laughs> like that. I was the best one on stage in my eyes. But my favorite was probably our headliner, Esther Koo from MTV's Girl yeah, Code. Yeah, she definitely She's would. killing it in there right now. Yes. Yeah, it's an awesome she's, No, she's, she's good always. Every time she's very good. Yeah. And that's it? Only her? That's it. That's it? I think everyone did a great job today. Let me say that first See, and foremost. She's got to be the nice girl and just tell everyone. <laughs> everyone did a good job. Everyone gets a golden star. Not everyone gets a trophy, okay? No, no a couple of them get the, get the second place, but I think a lot of them did do well. I really they, do. It was so awful there, there was no second place. It just went first and right to ten. Only thing is no that one did time. So, you know, your lighting didn't work for us. People get off the stage when you said get off the stage. Now you're bringing up stuff that doesn't even need to be brought so, up. So, you know, that, that's one thing. Like, get, off, get off the stage now. Right now, get off the stage. Now, everyone was fantastic. Yeah, they were. They were. It's an awesome show. The crowd loved it. They're having a great time in there. And I'm having an awesome time, especially interviewing with this pretty face right here. Thank you. This pretty chocolate face. So, no. <laughs> like, I don't know how to respond to that. Know, so you're like, okay, thank you. No. How many parents are in here? How many got kids? I want to have children, but I can't do that right now because in order for that to happen, you need a woman. I got that in my life right now because I suck at picking up girls. The real reason why I can't pick up girls is that I'm ugly as sin. That's right, it's true. I'm ugly as sin. It is what it is. Look at me, guys. Look at me. I'm so ugly, I look like olive oil chill on Popeye with Howdy Doody. That's the worst combination of that jeep pool right there. I'm so thin when I wear those skinny jeans that are baggy on me. I'm sick of people coming up to me and calling me a ginger. I'm a daywalker, damn it. And because of red hair, I get the dumbest questions in the world. Like, do the carpets match the drapes? Do the carpets match the drapes? No, they don't match, because you see it's business up top and party down below. It's so crazy down there, it looks like I got carrot top and a headlock. And my friends are like, Kevin, try that online dating. Anybody try online dating? You fucking losers. <laughs> Don't do that. I can't join any of those websites. I can't. I would, but I can't because there's thousands of redheads out there. Thousands. If I'm going to join an online dating website, I'm going to join one where I can truly stand out. And for me, that's blackpeoplemeet.com. That's right, blackpeoplemeet.com. And because I call my money bread and not cheddar, my screen name is going to be gingerbreadxoxo. I will date a black woman, I've dated black women in the past. I'll marry a black woman, but by no means will I ever have a child with a black woman. Oh, don't give me that look, hear me out, it's a very good reason, all right? My biggest fear is the child's gonna come out really dark black skin, bright orange red hair, and come up with a new racial slur. They're gonna be like, oh, look at this ninja right here. <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> I have a way with the ladies oh when I work. I just go to any black woman and I'm like, hello there, pretty chocolate face. And I'm like, can I get a lick of that chocolate? <laughs> and there it is. And this is why he's the comedian. He did the show for tonight. I want to thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you for having me. And a thank you. interview here. Yes. PWD, it's your girl KM, signing out. Have a good day. Laugh out loud, because comedy, double thumbs up. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. <laughs> I'm lying guys, I really do have a special woman in my life. You know, she puts that extra bounce in my step, the butterflies feeling my stomach. Yeah, and my heart just flutters whenever I'm around her. However, however, I have a feeling to leave the same thing it always leads to when I have feelings for women like this. And that's butt sex. That's right, butt sex. We do everything but have sex. Dinner, dancing, go to the movies, maybe kiss, suck a titty, but never ever have sex. I want to do a porno. I'm sorry, I want to do a porno. I don't want to star one because nobody wants to see this naked. Now, I'm going to produce a porno, and my porno will have a bunch of old ladies getting peed on, and we'll call it Golden Grams. Alright, who loves titties? Clap it up if you love titties. That's right. What's your favorite kind of titties? <laughs> he likes titties that makes him chuckle. What's your favorite kind of titties? All these titties right here. Oh, look at all the titties he's got right up here. 
Russell, what's your favorite kind of titties? He loves all titties. You guys know what my favorite titties are? I love old lady titties. That's right. Don't nail me. I love them. The ones that sag so far now she's playing soccer with herself when she walks. And the reason why I love those titties so much, the only titties she could motorboat and eat pussy at the same time. <laughs> all right. Thank you, guys. That is my time. I am Kevin Lapka. Thank you for coming out. Have a good night. Let's bring up Paul. Amazing host. One more time for Kevin Lepka. Welcome to TWE, it's your girl KM, and I'm sitting here with the beautiful, lovely Faith Frog. Hey, how are you, baby? How you doing? I'm good. Hey, let I'm me good. tell you, we have the comedy show, and I can tell you, I can vouch. She ripped the stage. She definitely did. She killed it. I missed it. No, it was, <laughs> it was really dope. All right, we got a late edition. Up next, we've got a special treat for everybody. We hope we all have everyone's attention and everybody's ready to rock. Let's give it up for Face Ross.
That's what I do, you know? Can you tell um, tell the viewers as far as where we can find you as far as on social media? Absolutely. Natasha Face Ross on Facebook and Face the Comedian on Instagram. Face the Comedian. So <laughs> Once again, this is your girl KM with TWE, and we're rocking out with my girl Face Ross. Hey, welcome to TWE. It's your girl KM, and I'm here with my boy Keenan. Keenan, how are you today? I'm doing good. All right, so tell us a little bit how you feeling about the comedy show. How you feeling today? Um, the comedy show is good. Uh, it was a good crowd. A lot of people came out tonight. It's a big shout out to all the audience that came out to support live comedy. Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> Support us before we get big. We all like Kevin Hart, so. <laughs> so <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself as far as what you're doing. Did you go on stage already? Okay, I didn't see you. I didn't see you actually work yet. So okay. Um, well, my name is Keenan Jerome Floyd. I've been doing comedy professionally for a year. Okay. Um, I did it. I tried it out ten years ago with open mics and, and little showcases and stuff like that. But um, I've been doing my thing. For about a year, I started off by doing open mics, and then I started doing shows uh, with people like Ray Pryor. Okay. I've opened for Fritz and Pastor, um, and other big comedians, and I'm now currently doing a bunch of shows in New York City within the next few weeks. So. Congratulations! That is good to hear. Any couples in here? We got a bunch of couples. You guys are a couple? No. Wait, wait, wait. Does, do, do you know what's going on here? I'm just, any single people in the house? Any single people? Holla. Uh, it's weird because you think about, now it's cuffing season. You know what cuffing season is? From September to November, what are the squirrels doing? They're gathering nuts for the winter. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies, it's the same concept. Because there's nothing like jacking off by yourself, watching the snow fall, eating graham crackers, and listening to Christmas carols. It's just sad. So you gotta have that time where you have someone that you shack up with. And dating's hard. I'll tell you, dating's hard. Um, for one thing, we gotta keep in mind, we gotta give it up for our ladies because they go through a lot to look good for us, fellas. They do. I wanna give a special shout out uh, to black women and their necks. Um, because these weaves ain't no joke. I had one girlfriend, she had a weave that looked like a World Trade Center memorial. And I didn't know how serious it was until she rested her head on my shoulder and this whole part of my body went numb. After that we broke up, I tried to uh, go out the box. So I dated a white girl. Never dated a white girl before. But you have to realize that in Allentown, white girls, they don't date a guy like me. Have you heard my voice? They want thugs. I went to a white girl, I said, excuse me, miss, would you like to join me for an ice cream at Dairy Queen? She said, hell no, nigga. I was shocked like you. Cause who the fuck doesn't like Dairy Queen? It's white girls, when they get black penis, they can talk to like, I can't even say the N word. I can't say the N word. I tried. Anyone here ever been to Arrington, New Jersey? Arrington, New Jersey, it's kind of sketchy. I go there and I'm hanging out with my cousin. He's walking up the street, he knows everybody. He says, yo, what's going on, man? It's good to see ya. Yo, sorry, you got a fat ass. Come over here, I wanna holler. See this guy and he's like, yo, I told you not to come around here, I'm gonna blow your face off. I find it strange that my cousin speaks this way because he's only five years old. Now I walk around his neighborhood like, salutations. What's the word? How you doing? He said, Keenan, you can't talk that way around here. They're not used to your accent. I said, what do you mean? He says, you sound white as shit. I said, that's preposterous. I was born black, therefore everything I say is black, even when I speak Spanish, it's black. So I just lost my mind and just ran up and down the street to shut inward. Nigga, 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 nigga. 25 front doors flew open. The entire neighborhood came out holding baseball bats, belts, pots and pans, and there was even an old lady with a machete. V. Graves looking brother walked up to me and said, you heard that white guy that said that? I went, I'm on the way to Popeye. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm serious. I am not getting home tonight unless some of y'all buy a parrot. So, um, I'll be sitting back with my cup. Other than that, I'm Kinder Floyd. You guys have been great. Have a good night. I really wasn't necessarily interested in being a stand-up comic. Um, it just happened. It just happened, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, um, I was just sitting around my house one day, and I said, you know what, I did an open mic a couple years ago, let me go out and try it out, so I went, and for some reason I was hooked. Like, and the crowd loved you, so that, that's what made you more energized yeah, to do this. <laughs> yeah, and so I just said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and, and try this out. And it became that if I felt like, if I didn't make an open mic every week, I felt naked. Like, I felt like I was missing something. So I kept doing it, and then I ended up hitting it up with the right people, and I started getting on shows. Wow. Now, the shows, that's I got... a blessing. Yeah, it is. Now, the shows <laughs> were a different response. Than, uh, than open mics <laughs> because <laughs> because there are people that just didn't give a fuck about you so you had to bring the funny true indeed and I remember the first eight times I uh, got I got booed <laughs> people threatened to slash my tires that dude stood up and said he was gonna shoot me in the face oh my god but it made me stronger though like this is, this is comedy this like is it was comedy. that's the sacrifice that you have to put up with the, to be funny I guess the crowd goes crazy on you. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. They can do whatever they want. But pretty much um, a few comics that have been in the game for years. Have all went through it. They all went through it and they totally don't care. Okay. Which, which, which seems weird to me because I'm, I'm a cancer. So that means I'm kind of like... <laughs> You're sensitive. I'm sensitive <laughs> so I naturally care about what people think about me. But they basically said don't give a fuck. Like just don't care. So now question. Do you give a fuck right now? No. So you don't care what anyone says in the audience? No. NMG, no fucks given. No fucks given. Yeah. No, at all. At all. So if I say anything to you, it's not no fucks given. No, no fucks given. I ain't gonna say that. Someone no, almost, <laughs> someone almost shot my face off. That's like, that's the worst. <laughs> that's the worst. I don't think you were supposed to say that right now. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so thank you for your time. And also, I want you to know, I want you to know you're good. You did an excellent job right now in the interview, but I just hope we can make fun of Instagram, Twitter. Facebook, Snapchat, on, everything. <laughs> on Facebook, you can look me up, Keenan Jerome Floyd. Keenan spelled with one E. Um, I'm on Instagram, uh, Funny KJ. Okay. And I'm also on Twitter at KJ Films. Check me out. Yep. And once again, it's the TWE, and it's your girl KM, and I'm rocking out my boy Keenan at the comedy show. Coming up next, we got a real treat. We got a comedian slash actor out of the movie Making a Comedian, Thirsty Wolves Entertainment. He's played Boston, he's played everywhere. Let's give a straight welcome for Jersey Jaw. What's up, fuck is y'all smoking on? This motherfucker smoking crack in a fucking mouth. And they got out of the box, they just got shit smoking up. Let me hit that shit, man. Yeah. 